Hey everyone, or good evening, good afternoon. I am Swaminaman from Infosec Train. The first thing is, what is the motive of this webinar? It's all about how you are going to hack into something using SDR. SDR is nothing. It's a software defined trade. I'll come to that what it is and how this whole thing came into the picture. Before I begin with SDR, first thing that you need to understand is how does the evolution of wireless network technology has occurred? Unless you understand the way how this technology has emerged, you won't be able to understand the importance of SDR and its hacking. Cool. So I hope you all remember that earlier we don't had this particular mobile phones or laptops. I don't know how many of you are old enough. Though there was radio waves through which people were communicating. It was around 1880. And then in 1900, we came up with a new thing that is known as wireless translating message. And that thing changed a lot of upcoming technologies. It was by Britain and Canada, which later on was by converted in like 1922 as a FM, or you can say in 18, what is it, exactly 1884, I think, uh, or 1894, something like that. There was a guy known as Gangelimo and McKinney. They began developing the wireless uh, telegraph system, and that's how we came into the wireless communication. Now, what is the exact way they were trying to depict? It is just a small, what do you say, idea how it works. But again, it is way bigger than what it looks in front of you right now. It, in this case, it is just like simply someone who is the sender, who is the source as well. He is going to send some data to the receiver. The receiver is nothing but the destination, and when sender has to send, he is going to transmit it and then transmission will be done through a channel and that channel can have some noise. Noise is nothing, it's just you can understand some unwanted communication elements. And then from channel, it will reach the receiver end where receiver is the destination guy who is going to get that data. That is how it was working in the wired communication system or wired communicado system. Later on, this thing was quite enhanced and we came up with a new communication process for wireless media. Now, in this case, what we did exactly was, the so sender has to encode it, then he has to put it into the channel. The channel is going to reach the destination side, and there the decoding is going to take place. And then only receiver is going to get the message. That was the one way in communication things started. Then we came up with a new thing that is known as modulation and demodulation. I don't know how many of you have heard about it, but it's a big topic in itself, so we are not going to cover that part. It is kind of how the modem works. I'll try to put more emphasis on SDR, so let's stick to the term SDR because it is more important as compared to anything else for today's seminar. Cool. Next thing is, I don't know how many of you have heard, like, saw this radio in movies or in reality or ever have used it or not. But this is from where SDR came into the picture. SDR was treated as one of the best way to communicate between different individuals or you can say different. In simple terms, you can understand like if I have to communicate with someone who's sitting apart from me geographically apart, like maybe thousands of kilometers away, hundreds of kilometers away, and we want to have a communication, I do not have to take buzz of going till that point or putting up the lines till that point. I can just pick up this radio, I can set the frequency, modulation, and then I have to speak something from here. If the receiver is at the same frequency, he is good to hear that. Once you hear that, he can reply me back. Everything was working perfectly fine. And the question is, why it was changed? Or why it is in problem right now? All the things with SDR started from this particular device. Now, all the components that were traditionally implemented into the hardware, all the mixers, filters, amplifiers, modulators, demodulators, detectors, everything, they are implemented by the means of software on any of the personal computer or you can say in any of the embedded system. That is how SDR started. Next, even the remote. Uh, that you have in your whole, like house, the remote controls of your television or anything, all those use this SDR itself. The things that you can do using the SDR is very important. See, you won't even believe, trust me, it can vary from listening to a broadcast radio station 
that is the FM that you hear. Okay, FM or AM, some people call it as AM. You hear that to the point of listening the satellites in the real world. The satellites are like a Sputnik and all these Apollo and Sputnik, they all could be contacted with the help of SDR. That is how SDR came into picture and made a big fuss about it. Then all the aircrafts communicating to each other and to the main control station, the DMR, everything, pagers, these were based on the SDR. SDR was something that changed the entire world. If you're going to check its application, see it was used by military for full connectivity, sensors, better performance. It is used in commercial for lower cost or in subscriber unit, base unit or network, maybe using for better performance. And the last part is the regulatory one. It is also used in the regulatory part as well. Before I proceed any further, there is one thing that you need to be very clear of. There are three types of connection. Simplex, duplex, and then comes in the full duplex. There are three things that happens. Simplex, duplex, and full duplex. For example, there are two people who have to communicate among them. Let's say a guy who is named as A, and there is another guy who is named as B, maybe girl also. I won't say I'm not a gender biased, so it would be a girl or a boy here also as well. Okay, so they have to communicate among themselves. If only one individual can send anything to the other one, like only A can send something to B, B cannot send anything. That is known as simplex or one way communication. Only one side can say something, other cannot. Other can just listen or hear it. Then some more technologies improved, something you found, and they came up with a new amazing idea. Okay, why do not we make it as a duplex? When both the ends can say something, both the ends can speak to each other. In that case, they came up with a duplex idea. But there was again one small issue. For example, A started speaking something and on the very moment or maybe just a few seconds later, B is also started saying something. So the communication was being collided in the mid and the communication was being cancelled out or the noise channels were in introduced into it. In this particular duplex case, it is, you can understand it as half duplex, you can say. What people were to do, if A is speaking something, B cannot speak anything. If B is speaking something, A cannot speak anything. So before they start with the real conversation, first they have to confirm that, okay, who is going to speak first and who is going to speak next. Next, these technical guys are so much nice. They found out a one-way solution, the common solution that is going to solve all our problems. And that solution was full duplex. Now in this case, they made it like this. You understand there is two line. Now if there is two line, if A is sending something from A to B, on the same time, B can also send it anything back to A. That was the concept of full duplex. And from here, SDR was something that take a huge boom. Once people understand it, these things, they were able to understand how this particular communication can be changed according to our need. Now the question is, what things do I need for the hacking with SDR? First of all, what is hacking exactly? Okay, do not confuse hacking with cracking. Again, do not confuse hacking with cracking. Hacking is different thing, cracking is different. Thing. Hacking is for learning, for finding any vulnerabilities, for security, for patches, all those things. For any noble cause or good cause, it is as hacking. It is always for a noble cause. But if you talk about cracking, cracking is always malicious. So I'm not going to talk about cracking part. I'm never going to talk about that. One. All these things that we are going to cover is only for the education purpose and everything is for the ethical part. And that is why we call it as hacking with SDR. Next thing is, what are the requirements that you will need to have before you proceed with the SDR hacking thing? The first thing that you need is, any SDR device. I'll come to what SDR devices can be. Don't worry. It could be RTL, SDR, it could be Hack1 RF. I'll, I'll talk about that. Then there is an antenna. This is the like SDR device, this particular thing. Okay, this is the SDR device. This is your antenna. And then we need some SDR software. Don't worry, I'm going to talk about what are those software and where you can find them as well. Cool. Let me just clean the screen. And we are good to go. This is one of the RTL devices that I prefer for everyone to use. It is known as RTL SDR. Its frequency is like 25 megahertz to 1750 megahertz. 
it doesn't have any transmission capabilities so that is one way to hold it, that holds it back you can only listen you cannot transmit it but again it cost under ten dollars so it is very affordable for you all then comes hack one or hack rf1 that is one of the most most strangest device it has hard duplex if you remember i just talked about simplex duplex and full duplex so that previous one was the simplex and this one is the duplex now by duplex means at one moment of time either it can listen or it can transmit it can do only one thing at a moment of time it will cost you around 300 usds or us dollars uh, that is why i said it's a bit costly and again it is widely available it works from 1 megahertz to 6 gigahertz that is why it cost so high 1 gigahertz sorry 6 gigahertz yeah. from 1 megahertz after this hack rf1 i would definitely recommend you to if you want to go further you can go on the pluto and this pluto is amazing it costs less it is full duplex again it is not till 6 gigahertz but again it goes till 3.8 gigahertz this one is known as up converter it has no transmission it is just for software nothing more than that it works on 100 kilohertz and upwards great from here i am going to demonstrate you some of the practical things which i cannot showcase you live on the very moment so i'm going to talk about those things by showing you some of the images and i hope you can understand before i proceed with this thing i just want to show you what are the software that you need if in case you want to go through with all these things first thing first that let me just the first thing first you need is a device okay that is sdr device and a laptop or any of the monitor device that can show you the received data in that you will need a windows machine you will need a pen to box and you will need a kali box these are the things that you need for any of the sdr based hacking if you have all these things you are already one step ahead than anyone else to start with this particular thing next thing is that you need is known as sdr sharp let me just show that to you sdr sharp this is again another one of the most important software that you will need to download once you have downloaded this software it is just click and use software so i don't think you need to understand it very in depth for monitoring what things it captures you will need sdr con console and that console is always recommended for the v3 that i prefer but you can download whichever you want this is the official platform from where you can download it and it is available by the sdr radio itself next thing is you will need gqrx and that too is for receiving and manipulation of the data that you were like looking at in the images that i was showing you great the gqrx would look like this one a little and it is used to detect and find whatever things or the whatever frequencies on which we are having any of the disturbance or noise so that you can understand that the transfer is going on this particular frequency one thing that you should understand that on the very moment is the better the antenna that you have the quality of antenna the more area that you are going to cover so always make sure you take good antennas like maybe discone one or maybe you can go with the uh what to say wire based one or the telescopic antennas by default it is telescopic one itself great after you are done till this point you collect all these things the first thing is you have to connect our dongle known as zzig okay you can search it on the google again i'm not going to waste time on that you have to just search for zzig zad ig zzig is a software that you will need and you can find it on the zzig.akeo.ie download it attach the dongle the sd device that you have and then start the tool you're good to go all the drivers would be installed itself so you do not need to do any of the effort now when we were doing this particular practical the one thing uh, which gave us a lot of trouble was finding the frequency trust me it is one of the most boring and time taking task for anyone and if you are a hacker or a ha into the hacking thing trust me the patience level that you should have has to be more than 
any of the saints even i guess saints like those people who go on the mountains and seek for peace next thing is okay how did we find the frequency nothing we just started plugged in everything we changed the zoom from top to bottom to see more in depth and less in depth we changed the range we changed the offset we we were changing the frequency from here left and right going all the way across and after a lot of look up we were able to find some good noise at these two different points now this one is having more higher one so we thought this one is what we are looking for but the point was this one was not the exact thing that we were looking for okay what we are doing in this one let me tell you first that we were trying to hack a car using sdr to play the unlock button frequency and unlock the car without having the key let me show it to you first and then i'm going to explain it to you uh, okay let's start so now we are going to find okay. the frequency so it was something uh, we were trying to find the frequency a lot of efforts were made from our side and finally we were able to find this frequency here so we were trying to scroll everything left and right back and through we were trying to press the unlock key to see the disturbance now can you see when we were pressing the button we were seeing the disturbance here at this moment we were able to understand what was the exact thing happening once we got this particular data that okay this is our frequency where we have to look into it the frequency was changing its color so we were able to detect that okay this could be the one place where we are looking on next thing is this particular frequency can you see this we were able to see this one in the video as well i showed you that we were able to find this so once we were able to find the frequency we captured that frequency it was something like 314 as you can see this here or not exactly 314 it was 313 something then what we did we simply captured the same frequency here and we were using the rtl sdr it is a script that is used to make the replay attacks once we captured the replay sound then we transmitted it using the send iq2 once we did it to send it the car was unlocked itself this is how a car fob works and using this particular thing we were able to unlock the car that was just for one thing of the sdr hacking now this sdr hacking varies from hacking into a car without its key fob or hacking into any organization with any of the employees card to let me show it to you satellite people are doing this things even we tried this things and it is working trust me it is working and you can hack into any of the satellites there is a place where you can find all the current locations of the live satellites where they are right now but again i cannot show you that thing but i can make you sure that there is something available on the net you have to find it that should be your task for the day find the place where you can find the live locations of the satellites and then you can buy the telescopic antennas you can buy the hack one hack rf one and then you have to connect it with your device you have to download these asdr sharp and then just do it try to do it if you are able to do it it's good if i'm not able to do it let's see who can help you out with that thing okay and we are also planning something big about this sdr we'll let you know all like you all know as soon as we are done with that thank you guys for staying along i guess it was quite informative for you it was just an introductory part so pause it on the introduction itself i don't want to spoil all the fun that we are going to include good guys see you then stay safe stay healthy take care